Now, an off-duty policeman who rescued 66 people from a burning bus just seconds before it exploded is to be honoured at the Pride of Britain Awards this evening. PC Colin Swan stepped in to help women and children from a Sikh temple in Luton who were travelling back from holiday last August. He single-handedly stopped their burning coach on the M3 and rescued all of the passengers. Well, tonight, PC Swan will collect an award for outstanding bravery. As Elodie Harper now reports. Shocked passengers watched the burning coach they were travelling in moments before. In front of them, you can see a blue car. It belongs to PC Colin Swan. He stopped the coach by braking in front of it when he saw the back of the vehicle was on fire. He then evacuated the passengers, picking up two or three children at a time and handing them down from the top deck. It was frightening, very frightening. Well, so, because you can hear the women and children upstairs screaming because they now can see, you know, obviously the flames and the smoke and it exploded. The whole bus sh sh shook and it leant over to the left. And that's when I said, no, my God, my wife and children are waiting for me in my car. I'm getting off now. I've done, my, I've done my bit. So I started getting off. And it's only because the Metropolitan Police have trained me so well and because they instill in us uh, the sense of duty that I said, no, I've got to get back on. Seconds after he got the last passenger off, the bus exploded. I found that nobody was upstairs, and so I ran downstairs, and as soon as I jumped out, they're still standing there by the blazing coach. So again, I started screaming, run, and as soon as I said that, it blew up right behind me. The passengers PC Swan rescued belonged to a Sikh temple in Luton. In gratitude for his bravery, they made Colin Swan an honorary Sikh last August. Today, the community are delighted PC Swan has been recognised by the Pride of Britain. Yeah, we are very, very, you know, um, you know proud that he has won this, uh, you know, um, because he deserves it fully. Um, people like him, you know, they need more in the world. Colin Swan will collect his award for outstanding bravery in London tonight. At the same event, the winner of the ITV Feel Good Factor Award will also be announced. You're both your hands on your shoulder. Amy Garrilla from Peterborough, who coaches England's only cheerleading squad for young people with disabilities, is one of the ten finalists. She's already won the regional award for the East, but says the real champions are her squad. Elodie Harper, Anglia News. They certainly are. And you can see the whole Pride of Britain programme right here on ITV1 on Wednesday. You'll be able to see Colin pick up his award and also if Amy wins for the East. Good luck to her. Well, it's great to have you with us for a fresh week on Anglia tonight. Certainly is as well. Now, what have we got coming up for you? We've got a bit of uh, X Factor, haven't we, as well? Plus the story, as I say, about the man with the voice. Two people have been killed and six injured in a crash in Norfolk. The two died when their Ford Puma they were travelling in collided with a Vauxhall Safira near Garboldisham on Sunday morning. Two others are in a critical condition at the Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital and another was seriously injured. Three more suffered minor injuries. Campaigners gathered outside Norfolk's County Hall today to protest against plans for a huge incinerator near Kings Lynn. The council says the plant at Saddlebow would stop waste going to landfill and produce enough power for 36,000 homes. But locals say they're worried about their health. Ellie Price has more. County Hall's a long way from the proposed incinerator site just outside Kings Lynn, but campaigners want their views heard. They say there have been examples of incinerators elsewhere polluting their surroundings. Once people get the idea into their head that uh, food in Norfolk is contaminated with anything, then it won't just be farms around the Kings Lynn area that will struggle to sell their produce, it'll be Norfolk farms full stop. Other campaigners say the council are ignoring the risks to public health. The information the county council is sending out, much of it is incorrect, some of it is ambiguous, but most of it is out of context. But the council totally deny that claim. I am categorically not worried about the health issues associated with incinerators. We have got to do something with this waste. At the moment we're landfilling it, and if we don't treat it uh, safely and properly, we're going to be faced with a larger bill uh, for the taxpayer over the next few years.
The councils say the project is fundamentally a green one. It would save sending three quarters of the county's rubbish to landfill, saving eight million pounds a year. And they say the process would generate enough electricity to power 36,000 homes. This is where the incinerator would be built. Now, the council say it's perfectly placed because it's so close to major roads, as well as the power station for when it gives energy back to the national grid. They also say it wouldn't even be an eyesore because it's already in an industrial area. Once the bidder is confirmed, there will be two public consultations next year. And if the project is approved, the council say they expect building to start in 2012. These campaigners say they'll fight it all the way. Ellie Price, Anglia News. Sport now. Then two of our clubs are definitely through to the next round of the FA Cup, with others facing replays. Cultures to have another home tie with non-league Swindon Supermarine, while Chelmsford City of the Conference South have a chance to be second-round giant killers. Donovan Blake has more. They weren't to know at the time, but Chelmsford City's celebrations have taken on a whole new meaning now that the second round draw has been made. The Clarets have been paired with Wickham Wanderers in League Two. The opportunity to take on one of the bigger fish at this stage was secured after beating Hendon of the Ryman League. 2-1 up and down to 10 men, Anthony Cook's goal proved decisive in their 3-2 win. I said to them before the game, you know, it's, uh, these, these games are great, uh, great levellers. It's not all about league form or league status, it's about who wants it the most on the day. Brian Wilson's becoming something of a free-kick specialist for Colchester. This was his second in a week, and it gave them a 3-2 lead over League 2 Bradford. David Mooney's penalty took them two goals clear. It eventually finished 4-3. To be fair, the boys looked a little bit off pace today. You know, we've played a lot of more pacey games than we've been able to today. There's some good glimpses of it, but to score four goals, I've got to be delighted. We're obviously disappointed three going against us, but FA Cup round two, you know, we're, we're in the hat and that's important. Colchester's Essex rivals, South End, in red here, need a replay after twice coming from behind to draw at Macclesfield. Barry Corr scored their second equaliser. Peterborough also trailed in their tie at Stockport. They had Aaron McLean to thank for forcing a 1-1 draw. No goals for Cambridge in their draw with League One Huddersfield, but goalkeeper Danny Naisbitt made an important save to earn a potential money-spinning replay in Yorkshire. Cambridge and Southend will meet if both win second time around. Peterborough face a trip to Bury if they overcome Stockport at London Road. But it's Chelmsford who have one of the eye-catching ties of round two and a chance for more FA Cup celebrations. Donovan Blake, Anglia News. And their extended highlights and interviews of all the FA Cup ties on our website.